excuse me, if you're using Serpent's visual scripting and you want to have a powerful tool for selection sets that, you know, when you select it, it's going to grab an object for you and then you'll have a list of everything that's in here. Uh, that's going to be a way to do it. And then you can go in and have categories. And so if something is selected, you'll see it pop up. And if we go here, we'll see two objects are selected and then so on and so forth. So it's kind of cool. If you got any lights in the scene, we can do that too. You can grab collections anywhere you want. So if you don't use Serpent's visual scripting, this probably isn't going to be too helpful for you. Uh, it's kind of like add-on development stuff. And it's just a cool way to condense your screen so that you don't have a big like drop-down list of all your looped objects because you're trying to loop them and it's just going to be ugly. So we don't want to do that. So let's start off. I'm going to throw our beloved default cube in. Grab a nice split. I'm going to go to visual scripting. I'm anticipating that if you are watching this, you either have the desire to do scripting or you are already somewhat versed in visual scripting. You don't have to know Python at all. That's not how this works. I, you would get a familiarity of how things do work. And so in the visual scripting workspace, after you've edit preferences, gone in and installed Serpents, uh, not the, this is a Node Wrangler for it right here. It's pretty cool. They got its own, it has its own Node Wrangler. Uh, but once you've installed this, you'll see this pop up and then you can come in and click new. Under the end panel, you'll have the Serpents tab. I always rename this to main or whatever. So I can put this to main and Serpents, Pythons, etc. functions. Really like the underscore. They don't like dashes, commas, or, or periods in the name sets too much. You can use periods, <clears throat> but I wouldn't advise it. So I'm just going to call this main gallery. And within this workspace, I can now drop in some stuff. Number one would do a panel, It'd be super simple. And so when you've got your panel, it's going to display wherever you project it. There's a lot of different places you can put this. And what we can do just to visualize this for a moment, we'll throw in a button and tag it in. And now over here in this workspace under new category, we scroll all the way down, we'll see we have our button with new category and we get a little error that says, what's well, a warning? It says no operator associated with this button. And we're not really gonna be using that anyways, so no big deal. Uh, what we are gonna do is we're going to be putting in an icon gallery. And so the icon gallery is going to display for us a dynamic enum set. And if it sounds confusing, it's not. It's just another way of a list and you're kind of looping through stuff to display things. So we can plug this in, go to the properties, and I want this to be my objects underscore gallery. And once I've got that in there, I'm gonna have some options. I wanna come down to the type, and I wanna set this as an enum. And now this is gonna be the property. I wanna go to add this property node right here it's going to display that enum for me. Now there's nothing in it. There's no list. We're not adding anything to the list yet. Nothing has been created. So we have to do some uh, logic and we have to make some things. So now with this, we want to be able to add items to this enum list. And what we can do is click dynamic. And now it's looking for a list and it's already starting to create something. So we got a little bit of reaction here. We want to generate these items. And we're going to generate the items via a custom collection list. So there's a few things we want to do here. We're going to put all this in a function. And the reason we're going to put this in a function is because we don't want the user to have to click a button. We want this to always be on. This would not be a good idea for assets because it would definitely bog down and crash Blender. We don't want that. But we can put in a function, execute. And what are we going to do? We're going to loop through an execute. And if you have the Serpent's Node Wrangler, you can just tag things in. Sometimes that's a little glitchy, not always. And I'm just going to save this for a minute. 
because if you don't, you're going to be hurting and unhappy. I'll say selection set gallery. Now this blend file contains everything you need to, to restart this add-on. So like if you were done, don't mute that. If you were done, you can go to add-ons, put in your name, the type, what it is. You can categorize, you can save your add-on, put a version number, minimum blender version to use, and a bunch of other things like that. So if you haven't uh, worked with Serpent's Node Wrangler, this still could be useful to you, you know, so you can kind of get a gist of what's going on. And I want a function return because I need to return something. And what am I going to be returning? I'm going to be returning a, a variable that's being added to the list. And that way we don't have to have this on an execute. So if I went ahead and printed this out, I can turn off the require execute for this and grab my return function. And it's also a good idea. We're going to call this, it's a good idea to name all this objects gallery. And I've got other object gallery things. So if you're creating multiple add-ons, you really need to start having naming conventions that progress. So icon gallery, I'm just going to say like five, actually I'm just going to say seven because I use a lot of these. And if you install another add-on or you're, persons, people, your customers. I don't want to call people customers in Blender. I just think we're all Blender heads. And they're going to install a second add-on from you, and it's going to have a conflict because you didn't have a good naming convention. So I'll come over to the return function, and I'm going to press R underscore, and I copy-pasted. So now that's going to read what it is, and that's good. Now, I haven't outputted... The list or anything yet because I don't have the variable. So I'm going to go ahead and make a variable. I'll close up the node tree and under properties. Where did it go? Okay, no, it's under node tree. Here we go. Variables. So I want to add a variable and this can be gallery seven and just keep your naming conventions like tight. Keep it nice and tight. And this is a list. We're adding to a list. So I need this to be a list. And first thing I want to do, so I don't get errors, is between the function and the loop, you have to reset the variable because there's a lot of objects in there and you're going to have replication and you're going to have lockups and other things. And I don't know how to explain what goes on behind the scenes better, but it does, it will replicate your loop, I guess you could say, a bunch of times, like probably thousands of times because it's just calling. So you don't want that. So it, in the beginning under the variable, we want to reset that variable. And when we drop that in, that's going to kind of clear us. And as the function goes, um, we will add the get variable. So I'm going to plug this in. And that's going to output up here. I want this to be a list. Make sure you guys can see that. I don't want to be that guy that does the tutorial and you can't see anything. And now this is outputting. It's going to output our list. And now what list? We want to have something on this repeat socket. And on the repeat socket, we can add... I sound robotic, don't I? What we can do is in add to list. I'm trying to stick to, to script here because lives are just different. And I want to grab gallery 7. And now I'm going to repeat this loop. And anything that's in that loop is going to repeat it and be added to the list. This item that's coming out is going to be uh, whatever our collection is. It's going to output. And you can output a bunch of different properties. In this one, we're not going to use a string or any of that stuff. We're going to output a property. And now with this object selected, I'm going to go up to select. And here's just a little trick. You can right-click here and copy context. But before I do that, I want to open the Blend Data Browser. You can kind of get an idea of what happens. I'll click context. And you'll see it's context sensitive. There's really nothing here yet. It is showing the context of the screen, but I haven't updated it. So I want to copy context. And now we get some new things. Number one thing we get is the view layer. And if I go in the view layer, I want the view layer objects because if I grab and just copy the property right here, and then you can hit Shift V, and then we could tag that into the collection. If you get a different one, like you go over to data and you run down to objects, and you go for this collection, what you're going to end up 
uh, getting potentially will be orphans and things like that. And it's going to list stuff in your gallery that is no longer in the scene. So you could either put a purge in there if you just have to use that. There are purge options, but I, I wouldn't go that route. You want it to be clean and just re read the view layer. And this is a pretty simple icon gallery. We're just going to be grabbing a few things. So back to context, I want to go down to view layer, open up objects, and I've only got the cube. So I'm going to expand the filter for cube and click the filter icon. Now I want to grab something and grab the name. The name is a property that can be set. So that's a string value. You can kind of see what's going on. Get back over here. That's a string value. So we're just going to copy that and we can shift V and dump this in. Now we need a couple more things. So what we're going to have to do, and I just because I am live and I'm going to lie, this is a little bit nervous to me. Uh, I've got just a little reference point. I don't know if you guys can see me open it. Um, but there's a make enum item. And let's see if I can grab that from properties. That is the generate. So I'm just going to shift A and see if make enum. I yeah, okay, there it is. And we can tag this in. It's not going to show any change. But this is going to allow us to add items to the list and make them show up in the enum. So we're already getting... Uh, something now it's showing but it's nothing's there yet so what we want to do is we can tag this in and we're going to be using the name property but we need to switch the name objects to property when we did that we can now tag this in from the loop and then we can tag this in to the name and now we've got something in here and if i shift d this we'll have two objects so now we're showing two objects, okay? And it's actually starting to work. We don't have any icons though. So what we can do is throw in an icon node and it's a little crowded. Let me do a little housekeeping here. That looks good. And I'll tag this in and I don't have to do anything special. It's just objects. So I can type in objects and get a blender object. And now that's gonna be uh, labeled to what I have here. And now what we want to do, other than move some of this stuff over so it's not overlapping, is make sure to create another save point. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. And it looks pretty good so far. I'm going to see if I can tag this in for the description as well. Okay, there's the problem. I don't have show labels on, so if you click show labels, now it's going to show you cube, cube 001, and so that's good. Now we can start building. So we've got like a basic, very basic setup, and it's going to allow us now to add some logic to what's going on. And right here is going to be where we do that. So I want to grab a couple of switches, and I want to switch node for switching data. Now before you plug this in so you don't get crashy, Go ahead and switch this to collection property. And when you grab that and pump that in, you're now going to be switching between uh, different collections. So I'm going to tag this in to data two. And then this is going to be tagged into data one, creating a kind of a logic loop. And now we'll need to compare some things. So we want to tag this in and compare this to something but we need a new property and we need to create a category list that updates the gallery. So I'm going to type in category seven because I have so many things named category. It's going to be a major conflict if I don't do that. And this one can also be an enum and it's going to be a property that can be displayed. So we need to make a little room here. And I want a, I want a column node because I want to build my UI and make it look nice. I don't want this on top. I want this to be the second item. And I don't have insert sockets on, but you can insert a socket anywhere you want or remove it. Go ahead and create another save point. And 
if you guys got any questions, I'll stop and answer them. No big deal. Cause I'm just trying to run through this and offer you guys a, an option. Like if you wanted to do some certain thing, you could download, you could buy and download serpents. I don't get paid for it, by the way, I'm doing this gratis. I don't, I don't get anything for doing, uh, for selling serpents, um, add on creation. Maybe one day when I get good enough at this, that they'll actually throw me in there, but I don't. So now this is on a column. What I want to do is display the category. And right here under add node, you have the property, the display property. These are just presets and the on property updates. If I grab the property and then I come back and grab the display property, I can now tag these in and I have the category seven here, but I don't want category seven to show. So I'm going to add an item to this enum category. I wish I could zoom back. I think I can zoom that in. Nah, it doesn't work that good. Uh, so what we can do now is we can name this view layer OBJs because I've got another view layer. So I don't want to conflict. I want to kind of keep things rolling, keep the names fresh. And then I want to add something like lighting. Since I've already got lights and a bunch of other add-ons, I want to put lighting and just kind of change it up and make sure to keep that good. So now under category seven, I don't want to see that. How do we get rid of that? Let's see, put a space or put categories. There we go. So if you put something in there, that nomenclature will leave. I think if you put in an icon, it will go too. So let's see, I'll just choose some fun icon or not so fun, just a drop down. Now it still shows. Anyways, we'll call this cats for now. That's for category, short for categories. You can drop that menu down. So if we select lighting, it's gonna show lighting. We select view layer objects, it's gonna show everything in the view layer, which is gonna be super cool. Create another save point. And now I wanna work my logic out just a little bit better. I'm gonna need to go to the blend data browser. Actually, let's see, I've already got view layer objects. So let's grab the property and I'm going to compare this to a string. I'll grab the, ob the collections in a minute. I'm a little scatterbrained on a Saturday. I want to grab a string. This is just the shift a menu, by the way, you guys can use this, um, you know, for geo nodes and everything. So I want to tag this in as the first compare. And then I want to tag these in as a second compare. And I just need to copy paste this. This is why it's so simple. Like you can't do this that fast in Python. And, and have it like where you can visualize everything so quick. It's, it's just wonderful. So now I want to compare this and compare that one. And then I believe Serpent gives me a lights collection and I can tag that in. And so now if I want to show lights, I can show lights. And I don't think I got a light in the scene. So let's drop two lights in, two points. And... It's not selecting lighting or just selecting view layer. Let's see. Data collections lighting equals. Um, I think I'm missing something here. Let's see. Lighting object view layer. This is the wrong socket. There we go. Okay, so now we have point light. And if you see, I wonder if I actually have three lights in this scene. Because it's going to list more than should be there. So that's that's one of those issues. Like if you have extra things, let's see. It's, there might be three lights in the scene. I don't know if I deleted the other one or not. And if I do delete it, does it come back? So it doesn't refresh. So you could, on things like this, you would have to add in a check, like a purge. So we've got some more work to do here anyways. And I would want category seven to create an update. So I'm gonna need an on property update and we could technically put a purge in here. So every time the gallery updates and you do something, it'll remove or purge. Let's see, 
it's been a while since I did this one. I don't expect to find exactly what I'm looking for, but we'll see if we can copy that. There's a purge button somewhere in Blender. It's probably up here. Orphan data. That's displays the orphan data. All right, well, we'll come back to that. That's not really a big deal. If you've got a collection that's not showing the right things, you can do a lot of different um, things. I'm not going to cover all that because it's going to be very complex, very long, and it took me 10 minutes to get the, the tutorial screen started in the first place. But when this updates, I want something to happen, and that something is going to be selecting objects by name. So we can grab our name value and just Shift-D make a copy of that, and... I'm going to want to go into my selection menu right here and right click. I'll have a get serpents operator and I can come over here and control V. I don't shift V. I don't want a button because this is execute. This is not interface. This is running behind the scenes. So I want to run operator. And the first thing I want to do is come in and create an action because this is going to be a select set. And I would like to not toggle it, but deselect everything. And we'll see if my context is good. Uh, I'm going to go into the context menu here and I wanna go view layer, objects, doesn't matter what object, I'm just gonna grab cube and I'm gonna type in select and I wanna select set. Hopefully this is the right one. If not, I gotta go to data. Uh, but now I have a select set for the active object. That's the one I'm gonna be using. And now I want to set the state to true. And I'm going to need the property. So like when something happens over here, I'm going to need to um, grab, let's see, I need to grab the active object. I need to grab the name. I need to grab a pointer. There's a couple things here. So I'm going to grab a pointer and I want to shift V and drop that in. And then under active object, this is a specialized pointer. So I'm going to grab the active object and shift V, drop that in. And let's do some connecting here. Get rid of that for now. Uh, right now, I wanna set the property for this selection set. After I do the deselect, then I select, and then I'm going to set the active object to a pointer. And I need the pointer value to set property. And just clean this up a little bit so it doesn't get convoluted and I'm just going to save again because it's always tragic when you don't and we can possibly use a name value here I think if we run through the string value let me collapse this a little bit you can see what's going on better if we run this through the string value I think we can set this to name and then whatever name is selected, and I might need to grab the actual gallery here. I want the gallery value. So when this is set, it'll, it'll select the actual object I'm looking at. And we will select the name property here for the select set, actually. And then get out of there. I want the string value. So the blue string is the, is the value we want. And let's see, we're not getting the reaction yet. It is selecting, but it's not doing everything I want just yet. So let me look at this uh, name value, deselect setting property, object gallery. I'll figure this out in just a minute here. I don't need description plugged in there. So view layer objects. Okay, so it's not working under lights. This is objects. So here we go. We're already good. So now the selection set list is going to grab each object in the scene. It's not going to work under lights because it's different collection, different setup. But now if I select from here, it doesn't matter how much I have in the scene. I can dupe this out. Just hit A and whatever. And now I've got this where any object in the scene can be selected. And 
that's almost the whole tutorial here. But now it works and we have a working gallery. So there's a couple of things we can do to spice this up. I'll give you guys some more pointers. Now I want to put the gallery on a row. So the row node is going to be something that allows us to throw buttons on this side. And I can kind of hide these and collapse them. I don't need to update this. You can um, change the scale of your gallery. You could change the pop-up, make it like ridiculous, really big. Or you can put it down to like two if you've got a billion objects selected, but you can't see the name. So you got to kind of find that happy medium where you can, you know, log stuff and make it work. I'm going to leave it standard the way it is and just create a nice little save point. Now from here, I want to add some things and you can display properties. You can do all kinds of things, but I'm just going to make it very generic and then end the tutorial. And what we can do is select a few buttons on, put them on the side of a row here. And as we connect these, should have taken all the names out. Let's take all the names out. And then I'm just going to tag all these in and now we got all these buttons showing up kind of wonky and funky don't worry it's all part of the plan now we can throw in any button you want kind of doesn't matter just gonna grab icons nice bunch of random icons here and uh, these are not lined up properly so let me check my logic. Uh, let's see. The side buttons could just be, they need to be on a column. So even though that's on a row, I'm going to drop this on a column, see how this goes. There we go. That's what I needed to do. All different when you're doing stuff live, guys, guys and gals, who's ever out there. Um, so this is all lined up now, and I can make my buttons a little bigger. And when you start scaling stuff here, be careful. It could crash Blender on you. And I want to scale this down so the buttons match my gallery. And 1.20 maybe. Let's see if I can scroll that in. Okay, it's not going to let me do that. Get away, Armory Crate. That's that gaming stuff on there, even though I don't game. Yeah, 1.25 usually works really nice with four buttons, just a little heads up. And then we can X on the X scale here. We can bring this up to like 1.50 and have some larger buttons. Now, these buttons will all do whatever you want them to. And you have a selection set add-on now that live in your scene will now select everything. And I'll just go back over this again because this could be a lot to take in, especially on a live where I'm going kind of fast. What we did is we went in and created an objects gallery, named it to an enum, and created we're creating dynamic items. And when you click, click the generate button, you can't have two in here, just by the way, you'll get this. The function is coming from having a function execute together and I've got the return on the continue socket. I've got a variable which is being reset before I loop. Otherwise you end up with massive duplicates and a crashed uh, UI. And I promise if it doesn't do it right away and someone's got a bunch of objects in their scene, they load your add on, they're going to really dislike you for a while because it's probably going to ruin their, their file. And then we're looping. What are we looping through? We're looping through logic, which is based on switching to collections. You can add any number of collections, string values, or whatever you want here. So just kind of open up your brain for um, having a different setup. And then the selection of that collection logic is based on our category. Our category will be set up here. And then we've got the UI stuff to make that happen. Just got a panel and a column. That puts one above the other in this order. Then I've got a row for the gallery and the buttons. The top of the row, which means it's gonna be set left to right, is gonna be the icon gallery. Then my column is my button, are my buttons. 
And then once we come back in here, we'll see that we're looping through a property by name. You can do this by type as well. And then we're using an add to list node and making an item item with an icon. And then when we output, we're outputting, we're getting the variable so that we can speak to the, like the run function can speak to, because we're outputting that. So it can speak to the dynamic creation of those you know, items, which are your list. And these are all lists. Then down here, we're using the galleries on property update and the category has an on property update as well. You can do things with the gallery as well. I mean, excuse me, you can do things, get out of there. We can do things with the on property update uh, for the category as well and do some cool things. So it's, there's really no limit. You can just keep stacking all this logic and, and going back and forth and back and forth with it. And then we're deselecting objects, everything in the scene. Then we're selecting the objects which are named in the gallery. And then we're going to set the selected object to the name uh, as active to whatever name is selected. So this property says, hey, what are you doing? I'm setting the active object. What does this property say? I'm setting it to this value. And that's pretty much it. That is the add-on. Uh, if you guys want, I'll actually put this on my Gumroad. You guys can have it. Um, I'll add it. You can just add whatever you want. It's funny that icon doesn't seem to want to work. Maybe I took off the emboss. Yeah, I took off the emboss. There we go. So now you can see it clicking. And if you mix this with my switch icon gallery tutorial, then you'll have a really cool setup because every time you click one of these, you're going to switch the icon. And I'll, I guess I can cover that real quick. So if you get a switch icon cool now i can tag that in and i want to select a couple of icons so i'm just going to switch the ghosty and i'll switch the blender here and that'll kind of put it back and now it's not switching right because you haven't done anything and so why is it going to switch uh, it's going to switch once it's pressed and we can do that and i I'm not even sure if I remember how to do this right now, but we'll go for it. I think we could create another property. We'll name this to switch buttons. I don't have anything named that. I'll switch it to a Boolean and I'll grab this property and we'll see if it goes. No, I've got to do something different with this one. Uh, give me one second, actually. I want to see because I've got to a big add-on list out. And I think if I open that up real quick, I'll be able to see what I want to see. I'm going to have to reference this one. So the screen is just kind of paused for a second. But inside the hard service toolbox, I've got this functionality. You have to bring up another screen. I don't think you guys can see my second blender screen. All right, so I'm in the other screen. I guess I could show you that one, but I don't want to risk crashing the live out. One second. <laughs> My node graphs are pretty massive. Actually, it's kind of fun. I might let's see if we can switch over so you guys aren't bored to death. I'm going to stop that screen and present. this one and it looks like I'm still tagged in so you guys should be able to see that in a second yeah this is a whole different setup here 
And I tell you this add on, this is a hard service toolbox. It's got the mirror machine. It's got the stack and storage. It's got bevel magic five. I just updated that. So this is what I'm teaching you guys to how to make this little column setup that I made in my add on. Um, and it just all condenses down now. I haven't posted this one out yet, but let's see. This is just a quick ad. So I wasn't ready for this one. Let's see if I can find that logic. No, no. And yeah, here we go. This is it. I promise if you ever get into doing this a lot, you're going to find out just how fun. And I, <laughs> I've got Japanese switches in here and all kind of stuff. So here's these icon switch. You can add custom icons that you download off the internet. And I've got the apply mirror. Let's see. I want to find one that's a little bit cleaner. Probably right here. Okay, so I'm actually switching the label with this one. And then I'm switching the icon with this one. So whenever this is triggered to use the auto mirror or to use that function, then it's going to trigger it. So I'm just grab, you can grab a property if it's a Boolean. And when that Boolean is selected, it's going to switch that icon. And just to visualize that, we go into the bevel controls. This is controlling it. So if I switch this, this is what happens. And so you can just do it that way. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching. My bad for it being uh, such a, a sloppy start to the tutorial, to the thing. It took me 10 minutes to get the audio on. But next time will be a lot smoother, and we will create some more add-ons. I'll try to do this every Saturday. Like, subscribe, and I'll put a link or you can try to find it. It should be on my YouTube page. And I put a link in so you guys can join the Patreon because I've got a bunch of free add-ons in there you guys can grab and play around with. So see you guys. Thanks for watching.